Everywhere you go in Rwanda, there is music. Round the bend of one of its famous hills, an impromptu village concert. Closer to the scenes of tragedy, a church bulldozed during the months of madness. And in the background, a choir. And most unexpected of all, the dancing killers. These grinning men and women are all members of the Hutu militia, the Interahamwe, which slaughtered a million innocents, then ran away to hide in the jungles of the Congo. Now, in an extraordinary, you'd think impossible, experiment in reconciliation, they have returned to Rwanda to live side by side with their victims. So, qu'on qu s'aime si c'est possible. <rire> tu vois, tu peux pas aimer quelqu'un qui t'a fait du mal sans pour autant qu'il te demande pardon. In the heart of Africa, this tiny landlocked country, famed for its guerrillas and a genocide, has chosen to face its own nightmare and find its own answers. Images are a reminder enough of what happened in Rwanda between April and June 1994. The world knew, but turned away. The man who led the Tutsi oh. rebel army, now Rwanda's president, yeah, Paul Kagame, nice has not forgiven nor reconciled himself to that. They knew it was going to happen, they let it happen. Even when it was happening, they ran away from it. Even after it had happened, they did not come to tangibly help Rwanda deal with the aftermath. So what, what, what moral basis do they have? Rwanda today is not the dismal, depressing place you'd imagine. It's still crowded, the continent's most densely populated country. It's still poor. But the eyes are not haunted so much as curious. And when we started climbing one of the country's famous thousand hills, we took company. We'd come to meet Celestine, now 27, still a teenager when he signed up to the Interahamwe. How and why? Because like most Hutus, he claims he was just following orders. Traditionally, Rwanda's Tutsis were patricians and cattle herders. The Hutus, farmers who tilled the soil a feudal arrangement which the colonial rulers cultivated and inflamed. At the time of the genocide, Hutu power was the cry, and poisonous broadcasts like these filled the airwaves. <laughs> Everyone in this village knows Celestine's past. Their relatives are perhaps among his victims. But today's government 
has issued a new order to reconcile. And Rwandans are obedient people. Have you no memory? Do you think you can forget everything that has happened here? For his remorse, Celestine may escape punishment for his crimes. But these men in pink will not. It is the uniform worn by Rwanda's prisoners, the colour and intentional humiliation. And what you see inside Kabuya prison is just a fraction of the 120,000 Rwandan Hutus who cram the jails and clog the courts, awaiting the best justice a small, poor country can offer. The government is trying to speed the process by giving those who do admit to the crimes of genocide shorter sentences, even early release. Yet few come forward. They try hard. Here is Kabuya District's chief prosecutor drumming up confessions, working the crowd like a game show host. His boss promises those who do admit guilt they'll have special medical attention, even two-hour visits with their wives. <laughs> and they won't be watching the paint dry, he says. Repent and be saved. But the truth is, Rwanda's justice system is drowning in a sea of pink. It will take the national courts 200 years to get through the cases, and they are not even the worst. The masterminds of the genocide, those charged with crimes against humanity, must face the international courts. But here too, justice is a long time coming, and very, very, far away. You must fly across the Serengeti, over Kilimanjaro, until you reach the small Tanzanian city of Arusha, home to the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda. Like its cousin at The Hague, the tribunal is run by the United Nations. Je suis père Seromba Atanazo. Here are the faces behind the horror. Many men of the cloth, like Father Athanese Soromba, charged with bulldozing that church, his own church, with hundreds of his own Tutsi congregation inside. How do you plead to count one genocide? Je plaide non coupable. Among the court's that, dozens of prosecutors is QC Ken we're Fleming. Really saying that the court should take the opportunity to be creative. Do you think people are just uh, really mind-boggled by the scope and the horror of the crimes committed? I'm sure that's the case, and in fact, it's very difficult, even working here as long as I have, to get your mind around the immensity of it. You've been here getting on for three years. Do you understand yet why it happened? No. Does anyone? I don't think so. Court is in session, Mr. Fleming. Your Honours will um, see from the Ken Fleming's current case is against the former Information Minister, Eliza Nitegeka, who not only sanctioned those murderous mind. broadcasts, but is accused of murdering Tutsis himself. We require he today. spent time out there what during is. the genocide, we allege, um, involved in the leadership of a number of massacres particularly in the Bissasiro Hills. The Bissasiro Hills hold a special place in Rwanda's dark story, where some 50,000 Tutsis who'd fled massacres elsewhere in the country gathered to make a desperate last stand. Just 700 or so survived. But groups 
of soldiers into a harmway, and these are the allegations, came and shot people. It was though it was a turkey shoot. Um, they were fighting against people who were trying to arm themselves with rocks or with uh, branches or whatever they could find. Many of them had uh, massive wounds. Many of them, uh, the women, had been um, sexually abused in ways that you can't begin to understand. Some of those who fled to Bissasiro came from here, the Seventh-day Adventist church and hospital complex at Munganiro in Western Rwanda. It is a landmark case in establishing just how deeply senior church figures were involved in the genocide. Samuel was a hospital orderly who buried himself beneath a pile of bodies and survived. Nine of his family did not. <laughs> How could a man of God behave like this? Ebyo byerekana yuko twembere twamubonaga nk'umuntu w'umuyobozi kandi nk'umuntu ukabareshyeshya utaka ukabutamenye naho bamuhambye. It was Pastor Eliza Fan Takarutamana who ran the Munganiro complex and now denies all at Arusha. Yet Samuel insists he saw his pastor block the path of fleeing Tutsis. He saw this man of God shoot his own flock. And near to Gekka, in the Bissasiro Hills, Samuel claims he saw them both, the information minister and the pastor, carrying guns. Samuel is an eyewitness. He knows where the bodies are buried, including in the mass grave beneath this grass, that of his older brother. Yet he has not been called to Arusha. And that was that your honours have the reference. I'm concerned about that. As for the results, the Arusha Tribunal has to date achieved a grand total of eight, repeat, eight convictions. Thank you, your honours. It's not enough, and if, especially when you look at the resources used, that's millions, tens of millions of US dollars, just for eight. They asked for the tribunal. They should assist us in, in seeing that we perform our work. Judge Navanitham Pele is the tribunal's president, a South African human rights lawyer who insists that justice takes time. People tend to compare us to Nuremberg 55 years ago when they completed and executed a, a large number of people over a matter of 10 months. Um, wouldn't wash now, though, would it? No, because of where we are, all the conventions, all the developments with regard to what we would accept as fair trial. Do you feel the pressure? Do you feel the time pressure? I do all the time, and the principal reason is that we have 29 uh, people in our custody here in Arusha who have been awaiting trial for periods of three to five years. We want there to be a tangible record so that... Politics, that too, creates problems. Fact, 
Under Judge Pillay, the tribunal has extended its brief from genocide crimes to human rights abuses committed by the Tutsi rebels under Kagame's leadership. Relations are now so sour, the government is sending witness planes back to Arusha empty. And the tribunal warns the whole process may soon grind to a halt. The Rwandan government has to anticipate that if they don't send the witnesses, there will be no trials. is the phrase of our times, to move on. For nine million Rwandans, it is their dearest wish and their best hope. But how? <laughs> the just ones are all dead, this Rwandan song goes. Those left eye one another like ferocious leopards. With justice stalled, the killers unpunished, who now will judge Rwanda's genocide? <coughs> On hilltops around the country, they're trying for a local solution, a bold experiment called kachacha, meaning justice in the grass. <coughs> Gachacha is the old way of settling disputes. Judges, known as the upright ones, are elected in each village. Rwanda has just sworn in 250,000 of them, from university professors to illiterate peasants. None are lawyers. The whole procedure is highly informal. <laughs> Anyone may air accusations against the prisoners or anyone in the village. Josephine accuses two men in the crowd of involvement in the murder of her husband and three young children. The facts are horribly familiar. Did you see them being killed? Josephine, a Hutu, married a Tutsi neighbour, never thinking it would affect their children. It did. They were targeted as sympathizers. What, at ages nine, seven, and five, they said they were sympathizing with the rebels? By international standards, Gachacha offers rough justice. Judges themselves are sometimes accused. You saw. You were there. The panels can imprison for life or grant freedom, all done at speed, with little paperwork and frequent interruptions. The country's leaders know the risks, but what are the alternatives? Is that what Gachacha really is saying to the world? I'm not interested in your justice. This is what we call justice in Rwanda. I think more than that, it, it is reminding Rwandans that you need to get down and resolve their problems. Nobody owes you a solution to your problems. These people don't care much for you. They don't care about what happens to you, as they didn't care during the genocide. So when someone starts to lecture you on the international I standards cannot, of justice? I cannot accept any lecture from any of these people. 
The purpose of these grassroots tribunals is partly to punish, partly to give villagers a chance to face those who wronged them. So, ultimately, they can reconcile. It's still early days, but the signs are promising. When will you come out of jail? I, I don't know. It's the reason why we, we, we believe that Kachacha will resolve this problem. You, you are wa waiting from, for Kachacha. You will forgive them. Rwandans are trying so hard to forgive each other, their pain both wide and deep. Some 60,000 of the country's households have no parents. These dancers are orphans of the genocide. Alone, but reaching out. Yet stories of resilience abound. This whole Kigali suburb has hundreds of parentless families, the older brothers and sisters raising the young, still, somehow, full of hope for the future. Do you feel reconciled with the Hutus? Can you forgive? Juliet, you're the youngest sister. Sisters always fight with their brothers, do you? No. I love him, him very much. I can do it. <laughs> Juliet and her brothers Gustave and Sylvester were wounded but survived 1994, even as their parents were killed. Il nous manque. Il nous manque vraiment. On arrive à en pleurer même, mais c'est comme ça. On a, on est parvenu à supporter donc. Mais on parle souvent de. Il nous manque donc. C'est ce que je trouve à dire. It's been said of Rwanda's genocide that no one person killed any one person. They were all involved. Neighbours, pastors, parents, strangers. You can only hope that somewhere on the road between punishment and forgiveness, Rwanda will find its own justice and show the world something about how to come back from hell. Comme le pardon, c'est la meilleure chose à donner. Ceux qui sont morts, ils ne peuvent, peuvent pas revenir parce qu'on a refusé de pardonner. Mais moi, de ma part, j'ai pardonné donc à ceux qui m'ont fait du mal, à ceux qui ont tué mes parents. I hope that genocide never, never again in Rwanda. Never, 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 never again, because it is enough.